What's going on guys? We have the most popular holiday recipe for you today. We're making keto pumpkin pie. This is gonna be an exact copy of your traditional pumpkin pie, except we're gonna use a keto-friendly pie crust and we're gonna switch out the sweeteners, more keto-friendly versions. If you're looking for something that's even lower carb though, we do have pumpkin pie cheesecake cupcakes on our website. That's a good substitute. If you wanna keep it super low carb, this one, just because it is made with pumpkin, a little bit higher than a traditional keto dessert in carbs. Very simple recipe. It's easiest made in a food processor, so that's what I'm gonna do here. But you can also make it by hand with a hand mixer. Ingredients here are pretty basic. The majority is gonna be almond flour, so this is one and a quarter cups going in. And then a little bit of coconut flour. This just helps keep it together and the consistency's improved a little bit. Two tablespoons. Then we're gonna do a little pinch of salt. So this is the only ingredient you might not have. It's called xanthan gum. It helps with just like keeping the pie crust together a little bit. It gives it a better texture. You can make this recipe without it though, but we're gonna be adding a half teaspoon. And then this is the recipe for a sweet pie crust, which is good for pumpkin pie. So we're gonna cube up this cream cheese here a little bit. This adds some sweetness and some good texture and tanginess to the crust. So this is two ounces, quarter cup, and also three tablespoons of butter, cubed, cold. Put those in. The last thing, just to make the pie crust a little bit sweet, is about 15 drops of stevia. And that's all there is to it. Now we're just gonna pulse this and process it until it forms a dough. Oh, I forgot the egg. I forgot the egg. So you need one egg. So that will help it come together. Now don't take my word for it, but I bet you if you wanna go with like a crispier crust, you could do two egg whites instead of one whole egg. What do you think? Maybe? No. No, Mega says no. I think that would work though. Okay, now it should come together. Don't overwork the dough, says Mega. And yeah, that came together pretty good. Okay guys, now this is the very important step to making a good pie. We have plastic wrap here, and we are going to plop the dough down on here. And how great of a word is plop? Okay, so you get it on a plastic wrap here, and then you just kinda wanna tightly like push it together, make sure, cause the, the main thing is you can't, see how I can like push this and just move it around really easily cause it's, it's up to room temperature now. You need it to be cold in order to roll it into a pie crust, like a thin crust and then bake it. So we are going to just form it into a ball here, put it in the freezer for like 20 minutes so that it's cool and we can roll it out without it like breaking apart. So that's a very important step to get this crust to work. So just pop that in the freezer for about 20 or 30 minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, we are back. The crust has been in the freezer for 20 minutes and now we have two pieces of parchment paper and we're gonna roll the crust out. And then start, I like to just press it by hand a little and then use a rolling pin and get it pretty thin. So we're using a nine by nine pie pan here. You wanna have it bigger than the pie pan, that's when you're about at a good size. And if you wanna do a bigger pie pan, like I know there's 10 inch pie pans, I think you can just make a bigger crust recipe. There's the pie crust and you can see it's not totally mixed together, but that's not a big deal. When you bake it, it'll melt. And this is sort of the hard part. You gotta flip the crust onto the pie pan. So whatever technique you can come up with, just go for it. If it breaks a little, that's fine. You can just like push it back together. If it's too warm to flip, you can just put it back in the fridge flattened like this for five minutes and then it'll be easy to get into the pie pan. It's a little off center. Crusts are very forgiving. This should be okay. Just push it with your hands. Make sure you get it into the corners. And then what you're gonna need to do if you get it a little off center like I have here, just make sure you get it into the corners of the, the bottom of the pie pan. And then you're gonna break off some of the edges and fill in the cracks. Not really too big of a deal. So I like to just do the crust. I don't go over the edges or else it burns. This crust can burn. Okay, so we got the crust formed into the pan. Then you're gonna need to take a fork and poke holes in the bottom. This will prevent it from inflating. We're gonna bake this for 10 to 12 minutes at 425. Okay guys, crust is out of the oven. And this right here is kind of what I look for to make sure the inside's getting a little browned because this part of the crust isn't gonna bake as much once you put the topping in. So if it's a little raw, that's kind of just how it's gonna end up. So you wanna avoid that. 
You can see the edges are a little brown, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. When we bake it for the second time, we might need to put a little tin foil rim around it. And we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna make the filling, which is a pretty standard pumpkin pie filling, except we're substituting the sugar for different sweeteners. We'll talk about that when we get there. To start, we want organic pumpkin puree. I guess it doesn't have to be organic. Just make sure you're not getting pumpkin pie filling. They're in the exact same can. It's kind of confusing sometimes. You want pumpkin, you don't want pumpkin pie filling. So pumpkin here for this whole can, you're looking at about 30 carbs, net carbs for this can. Yeah, so 30 for the whole pie. Say you slice it into eight or 10 pieces. You know, it's not terrible. So we got a mixing bowl here. We're gonna add the pumpkin. Okay, to the pumpkin, we're gonna add a half a cup of heavy cream. This will add a little bit of fat to the filling, make it nice and tasty. We're also gonna add two eggs. This will help bind it together. To get the signature pumpkin pie flavor, we're gonna be using pumpkin pie spice, which you can buy as a pre-made spice blend. You can also make it yourself by using like nutmeg, cinnamon, a couple other things. That route probably is a little bit better because this has a kind of like a generic flavor to it, but it's what people are expecting in pumpkin pie. So you need a lot of this to really get the flavor in there. So we're gonna use a tablespoon and a half of pumpkin pie spice in this filling. We're gonna add a pinch of salt and a little splash of vanilla extract. And if you guys want the full recipe and step-by-step, -step, the blog post is linked below. Just a little splash of vanilla. Okay, now all that's left is the sweetener. So usually a pumpkin pie obviously uses sugar. We're gonna instead be using erythritol. This is Swerve brand. You can get any brand erythritol. It is a replacement for sugar. So assuming you're making this for your family who isn't keto, you kind of got to think of how much of this you really want to use because People that don't eat erythritol a lot, it'll have like a cooling sensation in their mouth. It might disrupt their digestion a little bit. It'll just be like overall unpleasant. You know, they, they might not love the dessert. So what I like to do, if I was making this for our family, like people that eat erythritol routinely, we would use a half cup of this. If I'm making it for other people, you have a couple options. You could do like maybe a quarter cup and mix in some stevia. If you just wanna make it a healthier alternative to normal pumpkin pie, you could use a little erythritol, maybe like some honey, some dates, something like that, you know, to sweeten it. What we're gonna do is use a quarter cup of erythritol, which is a good amount. You'll get good sweetness from that for sure. And then I'm also gonna do some stevia, about 30 to 40 drops. And this is a recipe you might wanna, if you're making it for the holidays, you might wanna test once beforehand to see how it comes out. And now using a hand mixer, we're just gonna combine the filling. Okay, now it's just time to pour the filling into the pie crust. This is a pretty thin filling, just so you guys are aware, but it'll bake, it'll thicken up, you got the eggs in there. So we're gonna pour in the filling. Okay, looks like our crust is a little high, so we may run into some burning here. So we're gonna make a little bit of a tin foil ring. The pie should rise a little too as the eggs bake. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna place it in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes at 425 degrees. I would check on it after about 15 to 20 minutes and we'll be back to taste test. And we are back. The pie has actually been in the freezer for about an hour. So I dramatically underestimated the amount of time this takes to cool. It takes a couple hours and you do want to let it cool or it could fall apart. So I'm going to slice into this. Let's see what we got here. The first slice is always really hard. The first cut is the deepest. You know who that's by? No, who? Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow is pretty good. What's that like party song? Girls just want to have fun or whatever? That's is that her? Oh. oh, it's super silky. Yeah, crust is nice and crunchy. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Pretty good. Check that it just out. Has to cool longer too. Yeah, let it cool a little longer and it'll come out perfectly. I don't mind the little extra bit of crust actually. That's pretty typical for a pumpkin pie now that I'm seeing it sliced up. Okay, time to taste this. You can also do whipped cream. You can just like whip up some heavy cream, maybe add a little stevia vanilla to it. That's really good. Or you can even buy some in stores now that are no sugar added, I think, right? Sugar free. Sugar free. That is just a nice silky pumpkin pie. Whoa, explosion of flavor. Perfect amount of pumpkin pie spice, I would say. It's still a little warm. How do you guys like your pumpkin pie? Room temperature, out of the fridge, or slightly warm? Maybe even out of the fridge might be best. So just for reference, guys, the pie pan is two inches thick. So if you are making this at home, I would probably use like maybe a one and a half inch thick pie pan if they make those. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, with the same size crust to filling ratio. 
Overall though, home run recipe, if you guys are looking for more Thanksgiving recipes, I will link a blog post down below that has 30 plus Thanksgiving style recipes, all keto friendly. So we got pumpkin pie, we got pumpkin bread, we got pecan pie, ketoconnect.net, that's where all the recipes are at. Thanks for watching.